Hi, welcome back. It's Deborah Peters for The Deborah Peters Show. So happy to have you join me. This is episode eight, and it is not the topic that I had planned for you guys this time. I was actually going to cover off how to build a business model that fits your life instead of fitting your life into your business model. But um, that's all changed. And tonight we're going to have a completely different conversation. Hey, Mark, thanks for joining us. Uh, because of an experience that I had last night based on my show. Hey, Travis, nice to have you join us. So um, it's really amazing to me that it's 2018 and I actually have to have this conversation because one would think that as a humanity, we're past this caveman mentality but apparently we're not. So before I get rolling here, uh, I wanted to just say thank you for joining me. Thank you for sharing and um, just you know being a part of my life. I really appreciate it because I love doing this. It's, um, it's really what makes me happy and I look forward to it all day long. So the show I was going to do for you guys tonight was how to actually design your business model so that it feeds your life um, so that it actually contributes to the lifestyle that you want to have instead of the other way around where we have been programmed to believe that we need to squeeze our lifestyle into our business and if there isn't enough then we just do without so that lack mentality um, was the topic of tonight's show hey Nels but um, that's not what I'm going to talk about tonight, you guys, because I had the most ridiculous experience after last night's show. So the topic of tonight's show is online bullying, aggression, manipulation. Hey, Lynn, nice to have you join us. Joseph, thank you. Um, so here's the deal. I did my show last night, and my show was all about how through our life experiences, you know, we, we experience life through our senses. So what we see, what we hear, what we smell, what we taste, a tactile intuition, and then how based on the experiences we have and the significant emotional events that we have in our lives, that we actually then create patterns. And these patterns can run away with our self-talk and actually just kind of hijack our entire reality and have us believing that we're in a completely different space and time than we actually are, that we're not worthy, that, that we're not going to be able to be successful, whatever this, whatever, whatever the story is. So, uh, yeah, that was the, that was the whole point of my show last night. And I had a pretty good, you know, I had a pretty good group of people jump on here with me and thank you very much for that. Um, but there was one fellow that jumped on the show and Hey Craig, um, haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> Hope the self base treating you well. Hey, Ted, thank you for joining us. So I, I do the show last night and there's this one fellow that's on the show and he's starts making comments that he, he wants to connect. So I popped out the link to my calendar because I have like five, six people sometimes booking my calendar. Some people live in the UK, some people live in the US. And they're basically booking appointments based on the work that we're doing and the projects that we're launching. And they load appointments into my calendar through a booking link. And it, it's perfect for me because then I don't end up double booking myself and it populates across all my calendar systems. So everybody knows exactly where I am and when I'm available and when I'm not. So I popped that link into the chat, kind of like, you know, saying, look, I'm more than happy to connect with you. Here's the link to my calendar so that you can self book. And then he started private messaging me saying, no, I want to connect with you more. I want to talk with you. And I'm, <laughs> hey, Oliver, I just was like, okay, well, you can use my booking link because this is all about business for me. And just to clarify something for everyone, um, 
my Facebook, all my social media platforms are about business. Okay. I not looking to hook up. I don't do online dating. I'm not interested in any sort of creation of a false or fake or superficial relationship with anyone, whether it's through my social media or in my everyday life. It's like, I'm the real deal. What you see is exactly, I shoot straight from the hip. I'll tell you the absolute truth all the time. It may not be what you want to hear, but I am going to, I'm a straight shooter. And so I'm not interested in playing any games. And if you want to do business with me, you can go to my website, you can ask for the booking link and I'll be happy to, to provide it to you. I have an online business assessment. I'll give you that. It's a total eye opener. I've spent hours developing the questions in it and then literally years developing the curriculum around it because it's the business accelerator system that I teach and all of the human engineering tools and processes that I've studied for the last 20 plus years and invested pretty much my entire life in it and hundreds of thousands of dollars with continuing education. So no joke, okay? Um, so this guy starts messaging me. And then when I am not willing to connect with him, he messages me today and he starts bullying me about, wow, I guess you're too important for us little people. It's like, wait a minute, dude, I don't even know you. And why should I connect with you again? Like, what's the point of this? So I just want to address that today because I think that really shrieks of massive, massive insecurity. Anytime you have to do any sort of manipulating tactic, manip manipulating statement to get someone to do something that you want them to do that has absolutely zero to do with their best interests is kind of sick. And maybe he just has, you know, a couple brain cells missing. I don't know. But it seems to be going on everywhere in the world. And I know there's been a ton of press and maybe even controversy about the Me Too movement. It's not even a movement. It's like it's a Me Too awareness. It's a it's a Me Too in your face. Hey, this is what's been going on and it has to stop. So on Friday, I was at this amazing business conference and it was called I Am Superwoman. And it was put on by a group of women from around the US that um, have military backgrounds. I met the commander, she was at the Pentagon for years. She actually launched this group called Shiro's, S-H-E-R-O-S dot org. And uh, hey, Timur. So um, I was at that event and it was phenomenal. Um, some of her partners and her directors are um, law enforcement in various states. You know, look, it's, it's, it has nothing to do with gender. You know, I think that's probably the most archaic concept that I, I just don't even know where that has any bandwidth in today's world. Um, it's truly the, the glass ceiling concept. And I've worked with a lot of women in the corporate world that are executives that came to me for coaching because they were dealing with this whole glass ceiling concept. And so, you know, it gets to be really difficult to try to change a system when you're dealing with conditions. So the biggest thing I would work on with them is their own inner relationship. You know, how do they see themselves? And I had this one woman executive in particular, she was an attorney. She worked at one of the top five law firms that is multinational. They have probably something like 15,000 attorneys across the world in their various offices. And in the Los Angeles office, she was made partner. So she was the only female that was at the table and making the decisions about how the law firm was going to be run. Hey, Janine. Hey, Peachy. Nice to see you. Michelle. Um, 
I worked with her for a year because there was something going on that when she would sit at that table to make decisions about the budgets for the law firm, who would get to be partner, who would be in charge of committees. It's like she got small, you know, she would just kind of dissolve and disappear into the room. And then she'd come out of those meetings and she'd be so upset at herself. I think a lot of this is just generational programming. So, you know, when I got those messages um, today, and I, I just, I'd love to read to you um, what, what he wrote, because I think you'll probably just all have a really big, like, oh my God, are you serious? Like, you, you're really going to send a woman that's doing a, a show on personal growth and business growth messages like this? Like, the two, it just doesn't click, you know, it's, it's not like, it's not like we're all drunk at a bar and acting stupid. Like this is a this is an online business show, right? So he sends this message to me and he says, um, I'd like to get to know you better. And I messaged him back and I said, great, grab the link to my calendar and you can book an appointment. The first conversation is free. And if we can help you scale your business, or if we have a coaching program that fits for you, then we can address that at the time. But let's first establish a relationship around that and a need. Hey, Carrie Ann, nice to see you. Um, so then he, he, he messages Mac and he goes, would you like my number instead? And I'm like, no, <laughs> not really. Um, and then he goes, can I call you? And at this point, I'm not even responding, right? So then the message trail goes on and he goes, I'd like to get to know you better. And I'm crickets. I have nothing to say to that. You know, communication is also about saying nothing. So today I get this no question mark. Okay, then I guess you have no time for the little people. I'm like, wow. So, you know, that really goes to show you that the bullies in life really do have low self-esteem. And that's where bullying comes from. And it goes on everywhere. You know, it goes on in the professional world in a big way. This is one of the things that we identified when I was working with my client, that she had actually been bullied uh, a lot. And uh, it just comes from a place of insecurity. I've kind of experienced that too, you know. Hey, Claudia, nice to see you. Um, when I first started in the speaking industry, I flew into Long Beach, I was living in Vancouver, and I flew into Long Beach to speak at a conference. And there was like this little pod of people standing around grabbing a coffee or whatever. And, and you know, I kind of mingled in and said hello and introduced myself. And um, there was one, one fellow in, in the group and, you know, he said a, a disparaging remark to me. And I'm like, I, like, where is this coming from? Because you don't know me. I just got here. I literally got off the plane went to the conference and was preparing to do my, my speech on stage. So it really says so much about where someone is at. I want you all to consider this, that when you have these kinds of experiences, you know, based on yesterday's show of how patterns are created through significant emotional events and how these can download into our neurology and then we can repeat them whether we want to or not, and they just kind of get triggered. Um, is to, to learn to not take these things on. You know, it's, it's like practice the art of a keto. It's managing energy and learning to deflect that energy and let that energy roll on by. So, you know, I haven't made any sort of a response to this person and I just can't even see why I would dignify his comment with a response because then that just kind of adds fuel to the fire. But I think it's a really good, um, demonstration of, um, I have a theory. So my theory is that there's really a lot of crazy people in the world. And maybe of you, hey, Kaya, maybe you, maybe you already know that, but um, I really believe, and I'd love your comments on this, please. I'd love to have you right now just shoot in your comments. I really believe that there are a lot of bona fide, certifiably crazy, 
people on the planet, like people that are suffering from schizophrenia, <laughs> hey, and um, people that are just like really having a hard go of it, and it's a brain chemistry thing. Um, and if they don't get the response they want, then they retaliate. So how do you deal with all that? You know, it's, um, first of all, you just don't engage. You just don't engage. You know, you just keep completely, yeah, Timur, that's cool. You just, you just keep completely out of the mix because there ain't no game if you don't play, right? There's no fight if you don't fight. Now, I'm not saying that you never stand up for yourself. So let's not confuse the two, right? But I think, so there's two couple things that you can probably understand how this fits in your world. And I think Kaya, you can totally relate to this because we have kind of similar backgrounds with neuro-linguistic programming. Um, there's a theory in NLP when you're negotiating a deal that when someone makes an objection, if you ignore the objection, and they don't bring it up again, then it really wasn't a bona fide objection. It was just something that was passing through that they, they espoused that really didn't have any significance. But if they say it again, then you have to acknowledge it, right? You can't continue to ignore it because it has relevance. And so I think that that's where um, the bullying and the aggression comes in. You know, with some people, they're just basically looking for a place to attach and a place to sort of latch onto that they can then blame for their um, shortcomings in life, for their, for their fears, for the experiences that they're creating for themselves that they're not happy with, that they don't like about their lives. So if you don't engage initially, then usually it kind of rolls off. But if it continues on, then yeah, absolutely, you have to do something about it. But let's look at the let's look at the chemical makeup of that. So, what would cause someone to be a bully? Well, it typically comes from being bullied when they were children. You know, everything that goes on in our lives is um, is rooted in zero to seven. You know, those are the imprint years. That's the that's the beginning. So here's what happens. So we're born. And we pretty much come in a clean slate, you know. Of course, our soul uh, has has memory from, um, if you believe in past lives, I do. Um, our soul has memory from past lives that um, is there, you know, within sort of like our whole Akashic record makeup. And then, um, but from a personality perspective, from a psychosis from a, a patterning of our neurology, that's a clean slate when you're a baby. And you don't really know or learn the concept of um, impossibility until it gets taught to you. And I, I talked about this last night very, very briefly when I said, you know, we are taught to forget how powerful we really are. We're taught that because as adults raising children, we have forgotten how powerful we really are. So when we have a young child in front of us that is limitless, you know, children are limitless. They'll do anything. They'll try anything. They'll risk anything. They'll just go for it. Whereas we as adults are programmed in and, and patterned in to um, be afraid you know, to take the safe route to um, just in case something goes wrong. I remember one of my clients saying, yeah, we, you know, we plan for the worst and we hope for the best. And it's like, wow, <laughs> you just canceled out. All your hope got canceled out by planning for the worst because you're only going to get what you focus on. So, um, you know, we come in as these clean slates the sky's the limit. Hey, Art Lewin. Hey, are you in Palm Springs? Where are you? Let us know. I'd love to. Ah, Brad, nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, thank you for that, by the way. I appreciate it. So, you know, we come in just so clear 
And we don't know what we cannot do until it gets taught to us. And our parents are well-meaning. They want to protect us, right? Ah, downtown, cool. Might see you later. I'm going to be out taking care of some things. Um, so yeah, I might run into you, Art. And then what ends up happening is they just teach us all of their limitations because it's all they know. You know, think about it. As an adult now, what is it that you teach or have taught your children? You've only taught them what you know. You can't teach them something you don't know. And it's what we don't know that we don't know that absolutely holds us back in life. So when we're teaching our kids what's not possible, and they're trying to tell us that anything is possible, then, you know, usually they're met with resistance from us. And with that repetition as an adult teaching children through, no, you have to accept my reality because I'm the parent, sooner or later they, uh, they totally start buying into our reality and they become mini-me's and then pretty soon they, they actually start to act and look like us, including all of our limiting beliefs. So, you know, frankly, this is the thing that's put me on my path of studying human behavior because I caught myself, I think my daughter was about 10 or 11, and I caught myself treating her the way my mother treated me. And I love my mother. I do. She was a superwoman for sure. She was my hero. But the flip side of it was she was abusive. And so, you know, therein lies the dichotomy. I wasn't abusing my daughter, but I was insisting that she accept my paradigm of lack and limitation. And let me tell you, that, that desire to become a better mother was what saved me from my past programming and conditioning. Because once I started studying personal development and communication skills and then neuro-linguistic programming and then digging in deeper into neuroscience to become a better parent and I started to see our relationship blossom and turn around, then I, I found my path, you know? I found my path, I found my passion. And I found my gift, my gift to be able to just be authentically transparent with all of you and go, yeah, you know, I have been at the bottom of the barrel in my life a few times and I have reinvented myself each time until I finally realized I don't have to go to the bottom of the barrel to get better at being me. I can actually maintain where I'm at and take it to another level. So, um, yeah, you know, it's all about being a better you and not comparing yourself to anyone else. And so for the guy that was on here last night that tried to bully me into communicating with him and having a phone call with you or whatever it was that you thought that you wanted from me, I'm really sorry that you are in such a sad place because that is not any way to get anyone to engage with you. And for the women out there and the girls out there that would actually fall for something like that, um, I just want you to start to cultivate your self-worth and um, become more self-aware so that when that kind of thing, when that kind of energy comes at you, hey, David, then uh, you just deflect it and you know that it has nothing to do with you because that's everywhere on the planet. And I'll tell you what's happening right now. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this like six more minutes. So thank you for hanging in with me. So here's what's happening on the planet right now as the consciousness of humanity is continuing to evolve. And we look at it as being a complete disintegration of the middle class. So, hey, Andrew Garcia, nice to see you. Um, so what's happening is this. The consciousness of humanity is evolving. And I see it so clearly because 
you know, five, I've been talking about this stuff and teaching this stuff for like 25 years. And when I was teaching it and talking about it, very, very, very few people could hear me. Nothing like now. Like I can just freely talk about this and you guys get it, right? And there's entire programs everywhere for this kind of learning and up level in your self-awareness. So that's one testament to how the consciousness of humanity is evolving. And so what's happening is this. So as the, as the vibration and the awareness of consciousness, self-awareness is evolving and growing, um, it makes for a more pronounced gap between those that are self-aware and those that are still running their life like they're a victim and believing that they're powerless and buying into some kind of construct that there is something outside of them that determines their happiness, their health, their wealth, their success, their joy, right? that it has to be given to them and that they're not good enough to have it without a ton of sacrifice. So the divide is getting, is becoming so vast. Well, so what's happening to all the middle ground. So I look at the middle class, like it was sort of this middle ground where you could sort of have one foot in the victim consciousness where it's like, it's not my fault. It happened to me. It's not my fault. The economy's bad. It's not my fault. Um, my spouse did this or did that or treated me this or treated me that or whatever. Um, so they've got one foot here and then they have the other foot over here of, hey, I'm going to create whatever I want. So there's no real choice here. It's a, it's a blend of both. That's the middle class where they're sort of not really struggling in life, but they're not really wealthy either. They're middle class, right? So what's happening is that's dissolving because in humanity, we're making conscious decisions about our own evolution, about our own growth, about our own expansion, about taking responsibility for how we think and how we feel and our own spiritual maturity and being accountable to our thoughts, to our feelings, to our vibration and to our actions. And so then it creates this big divide because then over here on this hand, it makes the light even shine brighter on the have nots, right? But what's happening is eventually this is growing so much and it's becoming, um, the tipping point, if you will, the critical mass to the point where it's, and this energy is going to be so profoundly in our face that it's going to bring these people up with it. And some of them are going to come kicking and screaming because they want to continue to believe that they don't have to be responsible or accountable to their own reality. And so some of those people are going to just check out. And then the rest over here is going to continue to evolve. And what it's happened with that is it's created this massive confusion among the masses because it's like, you know, it's like I think about um, the matrix, like the blue pill or the red pill. It's like no joke, right? Which pill are you going to swallow? And because once you choose, like there's no going back. So if you choose victim, you can always evolve. You know, that's the beauty of that, right? But if you choose consciousness, you, you can't go back to pretending you don't have any power. Once you acknowledge that you have power and that you are the master of your own reality, your own relationships, your own health, your own wealth, your own experiences, your own happiness, your own joy, you can't go back to playing small. Like your, your, your neurology literally expands and there's just no way to contract that level of neurology. If you do try, you'll probably end up ill because it, it wreaks havoc on your body when, when your neurology grows and your energy grows and your vibration raises and, and the cells of your body are doing the happy dance and then you start to drill it down and dial it down and, and play small again, your body can't handle that. It just can't. 
So um, I think, you know, the experience I had yesterday and today with this guy trying to bully me into communicating with him was the impetus for this show. And, um, you know, it was so cool because there might have been a time in my life where I would have tried to justify it or or you know say something to him to get him to wake up and it's like it just doesn't matter you know he is where he is and uh and he'll be there as long as he chooses to be there and he'll experience life through that filter until he's willing to wake up and realize that um that strategy just doesn't work and for all you women out there that have had experiences like that um, just know that you don't have to. You don't have to talk to anybody you don't want to talk to. You don't have to dance with anybody you don't want to dance with. You don't have to let anybody buy you a drink you don't want to buy you a drink. And no, you don't have to be a bitch about it and, and be rude. You can just say, you know, kindly, no thank you. And I've had that experience where I've just really kindly said, no thank you. And they're like, cool. You know, and then I've had that experience where I've said, um, no, thank you. And then they get all defensive and they're like, well, why not? And I'm like, I don't have to give you a reason. I just said, no, thank you. And that's a really good lesson in boundaries. And guys, you can you can use that that as well in any deal you're doing, any experience you're having, because I know guys can get bullied around by by people, too. So it doesn't mean you're a weak person. I think it's kind of a cool opportunity. So to sharpen your wits, sharpen your boundaries, and get really, really, really clear on your relationship values. So that's it, guys. Um, tomorrow I'll do that other show, and I'll share with you how to build a business model that fuels and serves your lifestyle instead of trying to squeeze your lifestyle into some business model and be miserable. So we're all about happiness, joy, wealth, health, fulfillment, and of course, most importantly, consciousness. So that's it. Thanks for hanging in there with me for so long. Love you guys. Have a blessed evening. And this is Deborah Peters signing off. Take care. Ciao.